place called the Triple Buttress and it's a five mile hike around the back of the mountain. It takes you up to a quarry and what we're hoping to find is a frozen lock and a frozen waterfall but as well as that there's just this fantastic bowl just this big expanse of like marshland and frozen lockens and standalone mountains so it's actually really tricky conditions to photograph in and the further we get in the, the worse the conditions are getting it windy snowy spin drifts um, but it's great fun it really is um, so we're just going to get up to this locker and see if we can make some images work um, but if not this is just going to be a fabulous but tiring day out behind us here and we were starting to sort of feel the pressure because it's, we've got this epic landscape but the conditions were just feeling flat and we were really worried that we're not going to make this work photographically but as we came around the corner we started to see the quarry and the wind kicked up the snow was being kicked up and we thought this is fantastic you know this is what winter in Scotland is all about and you know I'm still unsure as to whether I'll be able to make an image work but Either way, I'm just, I'm just quite happy just chilling out here for a second. Chris is in his absolute element. He's headed further up the hillside there. He just wanted to me to hang out here and use me as a subject in his images. I'm, I'm quite happy to do that and just soak up this glorious atmosphere. So we'll head back, we'll head up to the quarry shortly. Hopefully find some nice sort of frozen patterns and things like that and see if it's safe to, to check out the waterfalls too. Uh, but I've got spikes on, they're absolutely essential when you're walking across this snow and there's ice about. Um, so yeah, well worth the investment. Right, onwards and upwards. shot here but to be honest it's just a little bit too harsh really struggling to kind of get inspiration the the elements and the just wind is blasting through this quarry and we're getting face blasted with snow I've tried to get a shot here because I've got some nice colours in the foreground rocks and a view out into the valley below so I've been waiting for the snow to blow over the rocks and try and capture some of that just to really emphasize the, the conditions that we're exposed to here but to be honest, we're struggling, I'm worried about Meg getting cold, so I think we're just going to have to uh, admit defeat, head back down and get more sheltered and try again another day. Woo!
So I'm here with Chris Air Walker. As you've probably seen, he's been joining me for a couple of days here in Scotland. Um, so I thought it'd be really nice just to finish off this episode, just having a chat with Chris and get to know him a little bit more and, and his channel and his kind of life based around adventure photography. So Chris, if you want to give yourself a quick introduction to start with. Yeah, thanks for having me on. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so my name's Chris Air Walker. I'm an adventure outdoor and travel photographer and filmmaker and uh, an Olympus ambassador slash visionary and yeah I live out of my backpack and constantly on the road for the past I don't know it's a bit on and off I've spent some time living in Australia in an apartment um, but it's always temporary because it's always until we can <laughs> get going again I guess the last three years four years what what strikes me when I watch your channel um, which is very very different to kind of my own style oh, yeah. of, of <laughs> photography uh, you know, you purposely include people in the scene. I'm usually trying to avoid other people. Um, but what, I have a strong appreciation for what you're doing because it just all sort of seems genuine. It just feels as if you've been, you know, doing that, going, you know, trying to visit these locations and being enthusiastic about the travel element mm. of it. And it just feels like you've been doing that f for a lot longer than what you've been on YouTube. So, but from the outside looking in, it just seems like this really aspirational lifestyle and I certainly I certainly look at it and think you know as much as I enjoy shooting locally you go to these like phenomenal locations I'm like oh man <laughs> this looks great um so but is it all kind of glitz and glamour because I'm sure you get lots of messages from people saying I want your lifestyle um but surely there's a lot of negatives to it as well yeah so I'm just going to list the negatives. <laughs> um, you know what I mean? You know, what, what sort of things do people need to bear in mind? Yeah. Because it... And it's like you say, I do get more and more messages of people that are like, oh, I want your life. I want to travel. How do I take photos and travel? And, mm. you know, most people forget that in my case, it's travel first, photography second. Photography is just a way for me to go traveling. But my real passion is just exploring and discovering new places. Mm. And photography is just an excuse for that. Yeah. Um, and I'm building a business around it. But most people want it the other way. They try to take cool photos and want to go to new places to take more cool photos. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. And that's fine, but I, I do it the other way around, yeah. I would say. And I think a lot of people, um, yeah, they think that, you know, the travel lifestyle is the one and only and the best lifestyle and it's total freedom. And in a l many cases, that's true. Like I live out of my bag. Like I said, mm. I, I have minimal, a very minimal lifestyle. I own two pairs of pants, I'm one shirt, yeah. uh, <laughs> pull over a jacket and like clothing wise, it's very limited because I have to carry all my camera equipment yeah. and you know, and I shoot with lighter cameras and there's a whole purpose behind what I shoot with to do what I love doing, which is traveling. Yeah. And I don't have many comforts, you know, I don't have many luxuries. Um, I don't want those, but I think a lot of people that contact me like those. Yeah. Uh, they like to come home and they like to have a base and they yeah. like to own things and buy things. And I have to really think about that. Yeah. It's not always easy. You know, yeah. uh, there's many places I want to go to and many things I want to do that I, I, I propose as projects or I find a way to make a film or, or, a photo series about a place or a location or a story and it just doesn't get accepted or I can't figure out how to make it happen. Mm. The only thing you see on social media is what really happens and what's, you know, what the positive and the, the, the adventure side. But then there's like these hours and hours of sending emails, pitching, like it's a business as well, you know, and yeah. I spend the same, if not more on my, com m more time on my computer sending emails and, pitching and making connections and mm. figuring out how to get to these places and make it financially possible. Yeah. So if you had to pick one place to go back <laughs> to take to take your camera, where would you go? Oh, oh man, I love the Faroe Islands yeah, right yeah. now. Yeah. They're also a bit of a fashion on Instagram, which yeah, is yeah. quite unfortunate. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. um, I know I love them. I made a whole film there last year, the adventure film. Um, I don't know. There's like so many places and I've, the more I travel, the more I realize that the places aren't 
the like it, the the hot spots that we go to are not the the reason we are traveling. You know? Yeah. And they shouldn't be the reason I'm going to places. Obviously, they, they, they make a part of, like, why I want to go to Namibia. Well, dead flay, you know. Well, I've yeah. seen photos of dead flay. It's like, well, now I need to go to Namibia and see, yeah. see it for myself. But then there's, like, so many other places that you discover when you're traveling. And when you stay open and you give yourself that time to explore. Yeah. So, it's really hard to say, like, oh, that's my favorite place because it has that one dead tree in the desert, you know. Yeah. Well, so the, the, the one say. video that kind of... Um, I enjoyed mainly because I just had huge respect for the the challenge that you were you were faced with, and when I when you were stood kind of near the summit of this mountain, I was still miles off. <laughs> yeah, and and the sun was coming up, and you know the I could kind of get a sense of what you've just gone through, mm. but that moment when you stood there, I was just thinking, wow, just that must the feeling of being there must be amazing. So, um, anyway, I'm, re I'm referring to Mount Lenin. Mm. So, do you want to tell us a bit more about that adventure? <laughs> uh, cause, because it, there's, there must have been so many challenges, not only physically, um, but also dealing with the weather, your gear trying to cope with the weather, even yeah. just try Because, we, you know, we, we, were, out, we were out yesterday, um, and I was thinking, blimey, this is, this is hard. This is a challenge. And it was cold and it was windy. And we had all sorts of different things to deal with. It was pretty and tough. It, it was tough. It was yeah. tough. It was tough. I, you know, I kind of hope that comes across on screen, yeah. how, how tough it was. Yeah. That's my excuse for my mediocre images. Anyway. <laughs> um, but, um, but then I'm sort of, I remember walking back and thinking, oh God, I'm kind of talking about how extreme these conditions are when I'm thinking, but in the back of my mind, I think, well, the guy I'm with has been at 6,500 metres and that, you know, in, in strong winds and minus God knows what. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, let's, let's hear a bit more about, about that and the challenges and just how rewarding that was. Yeah. Well, I think you should, what people should know is that like, if I'm not challenged, I'm bored. Yeah. Uh, that goes on a small scale to big scale. So if I'm not challenged by something in life, then I get quite annoyed with life yeah so i need something you know it, it's always been like that i used to do a lot of sport and i've always tried yeah. to i or guess push competitive forward, yeah. yeah um didn't know what to study so i challenged myself with the army did like an elite unit there and it's gone well so far you know like i managed yeah. to I, I set myself a challenge and the goal is to finish it you know and complete mm -hmm. it and I think it's still the same. Like my lifestyle now is my challenge is to be able to sustain this and build, build it up. It's a long-term challenge, you know, mm. and the peak Lenin thing was one of those things, you know, mm. a few years ago, I climbed up to Everest base camp and somewhere like in the mountains in the Himalayas, we went up to five and a half thousand meters that went out, that worked out really well. That was also a challenge. And this time I was like, oh, you know there's big mountains here i should do a six thousand meter one just to you know you get that number in your head yeah any mountaineer will understand what i'm talking yeah, yeah. about it's like six thousand is a nice number i want to get up that and then i started researching and i found out that there's the easiest seven thousand meter mountain just around the corner and the, you know the best time to go is like this month <laughs> I'm like, right. Ooh, sounds tempting you know and yeah like it's easy because it's a it's a walk so it's mm. not it's not a, a climb you you don't have to really climb anywhere you just yeah you know, walk to the top yeah I, I i got really lucky i basically sent an email to olympus hey you know at the end of this week is the last expedition up to peak lenin 7134 meters i'd love to go up there and document it this was again the excuse making a video and photography to be able to challenge myself and yeah, do that yeah, yeah. um they they said yeah okay we'll support it and um it took three days Right. And then I had two days to collect the equipment I needed to do it. So it was super last minute, zero preparation, zero training, nothing. <laughs> so I really not recommend it. To that way, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, well, uh, health and safety. Advice, yeah. yeah. <laughs> if you want to do, you know, I was starting to Google a bit. So, oh, you know, what's peak Lenin about? And then you find some like really bad stories. Like right. lots of people have died on that mountain. You're like, oh, maybe I've done something stupid. And um, other people like, yeah, some people climb Mont Blanc in France first to, right. <laughs> you know, acclimatize for Lenin. But you, so you didn't actually, because of the conditions and because of kind of other members of the team, you didn't quite make it yeah. to the summit. Did, 
when, when you were kind of stood there, was it six and a half thousand meters? Yeah, you, you made that? approximately. I mean, approximately, yeah. yeah. Um, so when when you was you were stood there and the sun was coming up, um, were you feeling elated? I mean, was it just like this mega experience, or were you, did you feel disappointed oh. that you weren't? That you couldn't make it. It was just like a crazy mix of emotions because you wanted to be at the top, but this was also equally amazing. A uh, bit of both because during that time that we were trying to go to the top, we were, I think we were a group of nine and there was three of us left. Right. Everyone else had either was like, oh, I don't want to do this. So in the three weeks of acclimatizing and doing, you know, hiking up, coming back down and eventually going further up and up and up. During that time, people just left and they had all paid to do this and they had done preparation they were mountaineers they were all kinds of people and there was three of us left and one of them on the last summit day wasn't feeling great so he basically dropped out so there was only two of us left in the end climbing to the summit or tempting the summit and i realized on the way up you know this mountain is a lot bigger than it's made up to be, you know, yeah. people forget that it's 7,000 meters. That's a, even if it's the easiest 7,000 meter mountain in the world, people forget that it's 7,000 yeah, yeah, yeah. and that's a dangerous place to be. And I, I realized that doesn't matter if I get to the top or not, you know, mm. I was happy that I got up to 6,000. I was, yeah. that was my, my, my goal. I was like, if I get above 6,000, that's what I initially wanted. That's mm. fine. If we get to the summit, that's the icing on the cake. Yeah. So when, when we had to turn back, it was fine. Yeah. But obviously I was annoyed. Because <laughs> you're like minus 35 degrees, the wind is blasting. Wow. Right. And the the reason we turned back was because the other member couldn't feel his toes and he had the bad shoes for the right. place. Mm. And we had nine hours to go to the summit and back to camp and he would have lost his toes. And mm. there was no way I was going to go dude, let's finish this. No, 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 no. I was like, that's not worth anybody's body parts. But obviously I felt fine. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I was very exhausted. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I was like, oh, I could, too, I, too risky to do it on your own, obviously. Yeah, we had guides. So we had yeah. one guide with us because the other one stayed back yeah. with the guy who felt sick. But at 6,100, if you feel sick, like obviously someone else has to stay with you to make yeah, sure yeah. that, because if it goes downhill, you have to get taken down the mountain quick. Yeah, yeah. So he stayed with him. So we only had one guide and the two of us trying to summit. And yeah, you don't leave people. Yeah. <laughs> you, don't, you don't say, yeah, you just go back down to camp. <laughs> you know? yeah. Like well, you slip, you die, right? So yeah. you need people to be around there to be able to help you. Yeah. But I know, I know when we were out um, yesterday and uh, we were up at that quarry and the wind was blasting through mm-hmm. and it was really cold. And I struggled photographically because my kind of slow and considered process to creating compositions you know my, my hands were freezing you know yeah. as soon as you took your gloves off i was it just it was quite difficult conditions to work in yeah um but if it's minus 35 <laughs> the mountain and the wind's blasting through then how did you cope with actually just you know did you did you were you stood there thinking i don't even want to take the camera out the bag or and when you did take the camera out the bag was it just literally a case of snap snap because surely you don't have time to yeah, not think about composition. composition it's no. just, yeah, yeah. Um, well, that was one of the things I, I forgot. So I pitched this to Olympus saying, you know, I'll take your camera up there and you'll see it'll work up there and it'll be really cool because it's so small and whatnot. You know, it's yeah. it's a great expedition camera. What I completely forgot is that I still have to function up there yeah. to <laughs> use the camera. And it's, yeah, 6,100 at the last camp before summit. There I was comfortable. Yeah, you know, very obviously altitude gets to you, but I was still taking photos. I took some of my favorite photos ever up there. The light was unbelievable. Yeah. Snow blasting over the top, and the you know snow clouds, and it was just glowing. And someone had walked to this other summit, not not far away, and his footsteps were in there, and it just looked like some it looked like the moon, you know, it, like a different world. And I really there, I took the time to compose some shots, get the foreground elements and things like that. But the summit day, it was hard. Mm. Um, I took my camera out of my... So I was wearing this big down jacket. I had the camera in there, took it out. And I had the big mittens on. So I had to take the outer, the mittens off and had my inner gloves. Within three seconds, I couldn't feel my fingers. Wow. So you're really just pushing buttons and then... <laughs> hoping, hoping for the best. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
uh, and it's it was fairly dark still, so it was almost impossible yeah. to compose a shot. So when you come down and you get some good ones, oh, it's like, it's yeah. good. Yeah. But yeah, you you snap. You're basically snapping photos. You're not composing. For my style, I have that privilege of going to a location, and if it doesn't work, then that's fine. I can come back and go the following morning because it's all close. But you, you can't just pop back up peak Lenin if the <sighs> photographs don't work yeah. out. But I would imagine that's not really that important because no. you've got the experience, you've got that memory, and surely a huge sense of achievement as well. Yeah. For me, photography is about documenting. Yeah. And not so much about creating a piece of art. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And those photos up there, there's a couple I shot, I'll send them to you, that really make me feel like I was there. And it, they, they really represent that sensation of being yeah. there. And that sunrise, seeing it at six and a half thousand meters, the sun coming up yeah. and the snow blasting over the ridge and just, it was amazing. It's so difficult because you're so like overwhelmed by that situation, and yeah. then you come down and show someone the photo, and like, oh, that's cool. It's like, no, this is really cool, man. <laughs> <laughs> I nearly died to take this photo. It is cool, right? Yeah. You know, and it's really hard to bring that across. And I, I'd much rather have a out of focus, blurry shot of an amazing moment that no one else will ever capture, or you know, something that's so unique, mm. than trying to compose something and miss it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. But I will always try to get the best possible shot, of course. Yeah. Composition, settings, everything. Yeah. Uh, so today I took you to um, some ancient pine forest, which is obviously the kind of environment which I really like. Yeah. Um, and I'm guessing you might not have gone to a place like that if we didn't meet up. Yeah. So how how did you find that? You know, are you going to start and photograph more trees <laughs> by any chance? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I'm going to get a dog and. Uh... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I was. You know what I thought was really great when you got really excited about it. I did get quite. Excited. I got excited too because the weather yeah, yeah. was extreme again. Yeah, we're yeah. probably wandering around this morning, and you were probably thinking, "God, Simon's miserable." <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. It was this morning wasn't good. I, I yeah, it, was hard, yeah. it was tough, and I, I didn't enjoy the first two spots we went to. No. And I think you didn't. Oh, no, I didn't know. Right? No. There was the, the, nothing the, the, special you knew about it. It's kind of worth going, sort of saying, "Yeah, tick to that box, don't need to come back here." So, yeah, yeah. But then when the conditions went to worse, <laughs> yeah, and it became challenging. Yeah, not really challenging, but it, it became a challenge to take a photo because well, our lenses were constantly getting slashed with snow, and yeah. you know, I, I really enjoyed it. Yeah. And then I saw you just like not, you know, yeah. there's like those three trees that, oh. yeah. and I, I appreciate really nice compositions and I saw the trees and I was like, this is, mm. this is just harmony in a, in yeah. a frame. You know, it was, it was easy to shoot. It was like right there. Yeah. And, um, yeah, I like, really and enjoyed that. Plump to self right in the middle of the composition. Almost perfectly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that was not planned. <laughs> it wasn't, it wasn't uh, no, she tends to do that. Um, yeah, yeah. She yeah. Knows. I haven't, I haven't trained her to go and stand on rocks and gears <laughs> longingly into the landscape. In the wind with her yeah, ears flapping. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she just does it automatically, which is quite bizarre. Yeah. <laughs> no, it was, it was cool. Yeah, one seeing you, you know, really in your own environment, and two getting those exceptional conditions that we didn't expect. Yeah, and I, I, like I've said before, the that kind of element of discovery. Um, and exploration, even if it's on a very small scale, is massively satisfying. So to yeah. turn up somewhere new and for it to snow and get all that atmosphere and you could just see it building on the trees on the mountainside yeah. as the mountain just disappeared into the clouds. So it was just beautiful. Yeah, yeah. It, was, it was. It was great. Yeah. No, I, I really enjoyed that. Mm. And I would not have shot that if no. I had not been with you. I would have not gone up that little path there and yeah. you just looked at the map and we're like, oh, this, this place is probably good, you know, and yeah. we go there. It's amazing. Yeah, <laughs> it was, it was good. Oh, yeah, this so, guy knows so what he's doing. <laughs> <laughs> um, so what's the next big adventure, do you think? Oh, a few ideas. Like I said, I had a really tough start yeah. this year. No inspiration, lack of inspiration. Um, and yeah, getting rejected many times is tough. Yeah. Or projects and pictures and things uh yeah there's a few so i'm going back to the fair islands for two weeks at least one hopefully two right 
going to be doing a workshop there. Yeah, brilliant. Then we're going. I'm going to Morocco as well to do some surf photography. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah. Which has been a long time, and I'm teaching. <laughs> so, All right, brilliant. Yeah, so it'll yeah. be challenging, which is good. Yeah, good food there as well. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, that'll be fun. We're we're trying to do a lot in Europe at the moment. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to go to Belgium, you know, Luxembourg now. We've got small tourism jobs, so right. we run the travel blog together. So we um try to do travel related work as well. Uh, and I'm trying to figure out, so I did last year, I did this film that went so much better than I ever could have ma- imagined. Dreamwalkers. Yeah. yeah that's and great. it just, yeah, it, as much as it surprised me how well it did, I thought I'd be inspired to go and do something better and bigger afterwards. And I am, but I don't know what. Yeah. So I'm desperately looking. And the more you desperately look for something, the harder it is to find it, right? Yeah. So yeah, it's been a bit of a, that's what made January and February really hard. Yeah. I felt this pressure. I need to find a new adventure and I couldn't. Yeah. And which is why I came to Scotland as well. I needed like a, a, a micro adventure, <laughs> just a week. And take, it's a pretty, just pretty, pretty epic photos. location, isn't it? Yeah. And that Scotland's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we'll look forward to those new adventures and yeah. following them on YouTube. But uh, yeah, thanks very much. Thank, well, thank you. For, it's been great to have company for a couple of days. In yeah, this, it's been uh, good little, fun. Little cottage. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, thanks very much. Cool. Thanks, Simon. Yeah.